Yes, you book online to get a ticket, but at no fee. It's an incredible few hours you can spend here, supported by free apps on your phone to get the most out of it. Keep watching as we're going to share some of the amazing art, the building itself, a secret location that many miss, and the apps you need for everyone to enjoy this incredible place. The National Gallery couldn't be easier to find. It's that building that overlooks Trafalgar Square. And when you get in, you've got a number of different galleries you can go in. And we're going to start here in the Sainsbury Wing. Not only are we going to bring you some fantastic paintings, but you've also got to remember that some of these are over 700 years old. That's older than many countries across the world. Whilst many of the paintings would be in golden frames like this, others were just painted straight onto wood. This is the Baptism of Christ, painted in 1450 by Priero della Francesca. Whilst we can't possibly show you all of the paintings across the National Gallery, we will bring you some of the really famous ones and you'll see a lot of those coming up a lot later. But we also want to give you an idea of the atmosphere and the size of the gallery that you can come and visit, once again, at no charge. Housing over 2,300 paintings, the National Gallery has been here since 1824. The collection itself, if you're thinking or wonder who it belongs to, is actually owned on behalf of the British public by the government. And when you think about some of the fantastic galleries across the world, this gallery is ranked eighth for footfall. So many, many people come here and just look how light and airy it is and how easy it is to pass through and look at all the different paintings that are on exhibition. Now, many galleries that you'll go to, it's actually wonder, hmm, can I pull my phone out and can I actually take some video here? You're almost encouraged to do so. And now let's have a look at some Leonardo da Vinci. This da Vinci is from the late 1400s, early 1500s. This da Vinci from the same time is drawn with charcoal and chalk on paper, which is why it looks quite faded. Also, this area is quite dark. This is to protect the artwork from the harsh lights. The restoration and preservation work that they do here has been absolutely fantastic, as these are a few surviving intact scenes which once formed part of an altarpiece which was from an abbey in West Germany. Now one thing I really want to confess is that I wouldn't class myself as an art lover. In fact, I thought I'd come along here and see what's here because the National Gallery being in the centre of London is just one of those places that you've got to come to just to take in the experience. When I got to the gallery, I thought, do you know what? I'm not going to probably spend more than about half an hour to an hour here going through, go find the famous paintings, say I've seen them, shoot a bit of video and then present it back to you. Actually, I was really caught up and taken in by the art. And as you can see, I can't tell you how much footage I've got, but I've distilled it down into this short video. What you can't help but take in is the beautiful colours and also the age of some of these paintings. It really does hit you for six. Another great thing about this place as well is the number of children that were here taking in the different paintings. Once we finish looking here at the Sainsbury Wing, which is just the first wing of the National Gallery, I'm also going to show you some ways in which you can have an interactive time whilst you're going round the gallery, which also makes it really, really much more exciting to look at because you've got information at your fingertips. So in answer to one of the many questions I get asked when I cover different places, do you need to be an art lover to come here? No, you don't. Do you need just to have the time to sit back and take it in? Yes. And also, as you can see, there's lots of benches scattered around as well. So you can sit back and take in the art or just catch up on life as well and take in the sort of ambience that's going on around you. These small paintings are the oldest paintings they have here at the National Gallery, with this one dating back to about 1250. Considering these are 700 to 800 years old, it's incredible the way that they have been preserved and how the colours really shine through after all these years. 
This companion guide you can buy when you're there or alternatively when you're booking your ticket online. You can pay for it then, I think I paid £10 for it, but at just over 350 pages it's a fantastic guide to nearly all of the paintings and their history as well. As you can see there's a comprehensive write-up in here about all of the different things that you can see. But we're going to show you something additional here as well which is completely free which you can take on your mobile. A brilliant idea is to download these two apps first so you can have a good look around. The first one with the horse of course is the National Gallery's own app and the second one that you can see here is the Smartify app which actually you can use in other places across London as well. Available on both Android and iOS when you get into the National Gallery app this is the first thing that you can see and if you've got children this will really keep them entertained as they're looking at the pictures. At the top of the first screen you can choose how long you want to spend at the National Gallery and take a tour of one, three or five hours. Click on that and it will give you the edited highlights for that time period. Once you've selected your tour it will then give you a map of which room you need to be in and which paintings to go and see in that room. All you do is hit the proceed and the next and it will take you through hall by hall. Now the other app you want to install is this, the Smartify app and if you see at the bottom of the screen here it says scan. Hit that button when you're facing it at a painting and it will look up the painting and all of the details and this works in most galleries as well. I think with these two apps we've got you and any children you've got with you covered for a great time of entertainment. This instrument from the 1470s was used to calculate the time and also the stars and the sun and the moon's position. You'll often find there are different exhibitions on and when we were here there was an astronomy exhibition happening. We've now moved on to the next wing and as you can see here you've got really large paintings but wow what a setting they're in. I've also got to say those leather chairs that you can see there where you can just sit and look at the art are extremely comfortable so if you're feeling tired you might not want to sit in them because you could fall asleep very quickly. In fact as we were going around the museum we had found some people that were having a little bit of a kip. Just want to give you an idea of the size of some of these paintings. If you look at the person that's walking past, it just gives you an idea how big these paintings actually are. And this one here, which is the Adoration of Kings by Paolo Veronese, is over three meters by three meters. You're impressed, aren't you? And no, that's not a crack in the painting. Actually, that's a ray of light beaming down with angels on it falling on Christ. I'd just like to confirm that I haven't had the Bluffers Guide to Art book for Christmas. What I have got is the Smartify app and it even works when you're looking at pictures and you're editing. How about that? That's blow me cover. In this room you'll find many paintings from the 1600s and in particular from Peter Paul Rubens and some of his absolute classics. Once again, you have to sort of pinch yourself that you can get this close to his paintings and that one has to be one of my favourites. Also, as you're watching this video and you like a piece of art, don't forget to hit the pause button so you can then really have a good stare at it and take it in. If this chap looks rather familiar on his horse, he should do. It's King Charles I and this portrait was done by Van Dyck in 1637. The National Gallery is really set out well and there's lots of small rooms off these larger halls. The small rooms will have dedicated artists within them but also just be aware that some of these rooms where they have some of the more popular, some of the Monets and Manets etc, god that sounds like I know what I'm talking about, they can be extremely popular and crowded at times so you do need to take it in but just look at this architecture. It's worth just taking the time to look up and see the painting and the decorating that have been done to the building alone. Be aware this place gets crowded at school holidays and weekends and also rainy days as well. Now we hit the late 1800s and these are Van Goghs. If you haven't been to any of the immersive Van Gogh experiences or you're thinking that you can't make it don't worry we've got you covered. There's a video up in the top right hand corner of our trip to the Van Gogh immersive experience. 
I've got to say again for the record, I wouldn't call myself an art buff, but standing here and looking at these Van Goghs really did make that hair on the back of my neck stand up. Now you can probably understand why this room may be busy, because we go from Van Goghs to Matisse. Then on to Picasso. And Monet as well. If I was going to pick one of my favourites from the collection, it would probably have to be this one, which is a Monet, and it's a view up at Westminster Bridge and the Houses of Parliament on the right. This view would have been painted from where the Golden Jubilee Bridge is now. Now at the beginning of the video, I promised you a secret place that many people miss, and this is it. It's a staircase that goes downstairs, but as you can see, if you want to see other fantastic paintings from classic artists, then you need to go down here. Now it could be that I'm stupid and I just completely missed it, but I walked past here twice without realising. So if you want to see Renoir, Monet, Cezanne and many others, definitely come down here. One thing I promise you, come down here and you won't be disappointed at all. You're going to find paintings down here, you're going to go, wow, I've seen those before. And you're standing there, right in front of them. I really hope you're getting a sense of some of these paintings and the fact that you're here standing in front of them with the colours shining at you. Also, a great thing you can do is if you want to find out more about any of the paintings that I'm showing you here, if you go to the Smartify app and actually hit the scan, it will give you the information on the paintings as well. Go on, give it a go. Now, if you found all of this to be really helpful and you're loving it, don't forget to hit the like button for us so we can spread this video to so many more people across YouTube. Go on, help us. Let's get London into other people's lives. This Monet is so good, you can almost smell the sea air. Keeping the French theme, we now look at Renoir. It's incredible to think, isn't it? Miss that staircase and you miss all of this fantastic art. Whilst we've shown you highlights of some of the different paintings available, all these highlights I've shown you since this, we found this hidden place. This is almost the end of it. So just think you would have missed all of this fantastic art if you just carried on past the staircase. Right, let's get back on the trail upstairs, back in the main galleries. And even I, an uneducated art person in any way, shape or form, recognize some of these paintings and these are absolute classics hanging. Here, we're in the gallery with the British painters. If you think this painting by George Stubbs is somewhat familiar, that's because this whistle jacket is actually the picture that's on the National Gallery app. This John Constable painting, The Cornfield, is nearly 200 years old. And it's funny to think, isn't it, when you compare it to some of the other paintings we've seen in the Sainsbury Gallery, that it feels quite young in comparison. And we go from British painters to Italian, and now it's time for some Canalettos. And these are really impressive. These paintings are about 300 years old. This painting by Tipoli in the middle is almost three meters high and two meters wide to give you an idea of the sheer size. And 
how recognisable is Venice in these canalettos? With over 2,300 paintings, there's no way we can capture all of them, but I'm hoping that this video has given you a sort of a flavour and sort of whetted your appetite if you fancy coming down to the National Gallery. With the obligatory gift shop, but also with a great cafe where you can get refreshments, it is a wonderful place to come and spend time. So hopefully it's given you a taste for it. And if you fancy seeing some more art, how about this? We've put a card in the top right hand corner to our next video, which is the Queen's Gallery over at Buckingham Palace, which we went to. And once again, another great art collection. So click on that and I'll see you in there.